Hey, welcome to Today Matters, our short devotional in the Word of God, and I'm taking you through the book of Colossians in just about five minutes a day. It's Friar Friday. Playoffs are coming. September is coming, and it is the stretch run where dreams can come true or dreams are crushed. So let's go Padres. We need, we need, we need some more starting pitching. Let's just, but we're not here to talk about pitching. We're here to talk about pitching the gospel. Welcome, 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 welcome. Hey, we're digging into Colossians 4-4 today. 44 is a great baseball number, by the way. But anyway, 4-4, Colossians 4-4, which says, Pray that I will proclaim this message as clearly as I should. I want to dig into that a little further. Paul further asked Colossians to pray that when God opened a door for the gospel, and we talked about praying for open doors, when God opens that moment, opens the door for the gospel, that I may make it clear in the way I ought to speak. Okay, and ought, when he says that, it can be really understood in two ways. First, it refers to the compulsion that Paul felt to preach the gospel. Paul was one of those guys where he could not not speak the gospel. Uh, There's sometimes in life, there's certain things that you just have to do because it's what you're called to do and you feel a compulsion to do it. And that's the way Paul was. And ought refers first to this compulsion that he felt to preach the gospel. That was a constant burden in his life. And then to the Roman church, he wrote, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. And he talks about the Jew first and also the Greek or the Gentile from Romans 1.16. In 1 Corinthians 9, he says, If I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of, for I am under compulsion. And he even says, Woe to me if I don't preach the gospel. That's how compelled he was. And second, ought, when he says I ought to speak, how I ought to speak, refers to the mandate for using the God-ordained method of presenting the gospel. See, Paul preached the gospel by solemnly testifying to both Jews and Greeks, also Gentile, known as Gentiles, the repentance to repent toward God and really to have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts 20, 21. Solemnly testifying is from the original Greek word. Remember the New Testament was originally written in Greek. Dia mar, stay with me, ter omai. Okay, which means to give a thorough and complete testimony. Thorough and complete testimony. This is why we must preach the whole counsel of the Word of God, not just some of the parts of the Bible. Okay, we are in a teaching series called Relationship Rehab on Sundays. And these are tough subjects, right? We've talked about affairs. We've talked about sex. We talk about forgiveness. All these things. We must dia mar ter omai. We have to give a thorough and complete testimony of the whole Word of God, okay? The one thing you will always get at Skyline Church is the truth of the Word of God. You've got to decide what you want to do with it, and I'm compelled to tell you it and to tell you what to do with it, but you got to act on it. But we will never do what the Bible talks about as tickling the ears and giving people only what they want to hear. That's not what we're going to do, and unfortunately, that's what happens in a lot of places. It's a tickling of the ears, but we have to teach the whole thing, even the parts that are really difficult, and we may not even want to teach sometimes, but we're compulsed to do it. The gospel should be proclaimed clearly and boldly, as it talks about in Ephesians 6, wisely, as it talks about in Proverbs 25, and graciously, as it talks about in Ephesians 4. There are three popular kinds of evangelism that really Paul speaks to, and the whole Bible speaks to, to avoid. And the first one is experience-based evangelism. It focuses not on the gospel message from scripture passages, but on a person's testimony of personal feelings and experiences. The obvious danger in this method is that people may not really understand the gospel at all. Yet they're going to respond to what was said maybe emotionally, and they think they're saved because they got chills, right? They got a quiver in their liver. And then they're always looking for that quiver in the liver. They're always looking for the Holy Ghost chills. You know, you hear people talk about that. I, I got to have that experience or it's not real. Well, that's not true. They end up not basing it on the Word of God, but basing it on their emotions or feelings. 
A second kind of evangelism to be avoided is ego-focused evangelism. In other words, it's just all focused on me. This evangelism really sells Jesus as the panacea for all of life's problems. <laughs> He's the source of all earthly comfort. He's the source of your well-being and prosperity. Uh, it promises that continual happiness and freedom from struggle are available through him in this life. Right? If you're hurting or if you're going through troubles because you don't have enough faith, it's that idea. In short, it's man-centered, not God-centered. And although salvation certainly does bring joy and peace and comfort in so many ways, the gospel does not guarantee a life without difficulty. Paul warned that through many tribulations, this is Acts 14, 22, we must enter the kingdom of God through many tribulations. Boy, that's not prosperity gospel. Hello. Jesus told the disciples that a slave is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. Well, that sounds like fun. But it's the truth, isn't it? In fact, Jesus promised, in the world you will have tribulation. But take courage. I have overcome the world. See, when we talk about giving the whole counsel of the Word of God, there are certain denominations and people that will take the whole section that I just mentioned to you and, and throw it aside. If you're not healthy and wealthy, then you must not be a strong Christian. Or you must be in sin. And that is wrong. A final form of evangelism to be avoided is high-pressure evangelism. Now, this wrong method of evangelism uses high-pressure tactics, manipulation, cleverness, emotional stimulation, or some kind of technique to force commitments. It, too, often results in false professions of faith. There's a manipulation that takes place to get people to come forward or stand up or whatever it might be to try to manipulate the moment. Now, I'm not opposed to someone standing up, coming forward or raising their hand or anything. I'm not opposed to that. It's in how that came to that moment is really important. Was it emotionally driven? Was it focused on pressure? Was it how was that done? And Paul, that's exactly what he's talking about, too. He wanted people to pray that he would speak as he ought to speak, as God wanted him to speak. That should be our prayer for everyone who proclaims Christ. So, in closing, I'd ask you, pray for me that I would always speak as I ought to speak. Please, pray for me today, because today matters.